President-elect Joe Biden is preparing to transition into the White House, and some members of the GOP party are looking forward to the change in office. Former Michigan Governor Rick Snyder publicly endorsed Joe Biden for president back in September. The longtime Republican called President Trump a bully and said Joe Biden is someone who cares deeply about the future of this country. So Snyder joins several prominent Republican figures in backing Biden, including John Kasich and Cindy McCain. And with more now from Ann Arbor, Michigan, former Michigan Governor Rick Snyder is joining us this morning. Thank you so much for getting up nice and early to talk to us about this. So listen, you were one of a handful, but a notable handful of Republicans who vocally uh, supported Joe Biden. Tell me what led you to that decision. Well, there are a couple of things, Anne Marie. First of all, it was the right thing to do. I, I just felt I had to do something. Uh, with the president's behavior and the need to heal our country. I, I spoke for several years when I was governor in those last few years that the greatest threat to America was us, uh, the divisiveness going on in our country and the need for civility. And Donald Trump was the chief divider of our nation. He was leading that charge. And Joe Biden, I got to know the vice president uh, when we served at the same time, and I respected him. And I knew he would work hard to bring us together. And it's wonderful to see the speeches he's given so far, what he's doing. The other part that really got my attention were young people came to me and asked my opinion. Uh, because when you're an old governor, you never know how much people care. And uh, they reached out to me and said, it would be great, Governor, if you'd share your opinion. I heard that from everyone to my kids saying, Dad, please say something. And so it was important to speak out. Now, you mentioned that you know Joe, um, and, you know, he's obviously spent a lot of time in Washington, a lot of time on Capitol Hill. But, you know, the Congress and the way Congress behaves when he was there is much different than it is right now. And, yes, you know, um, he was kind of like a little bit of a secret weapon for President Obama when it came to dealing with Congress, that, that Joe Biden would, would do a lot of that sort of talking to, the glad-handing, the, the, the winning people over. Do you think he has the ability in this particularly divided Congress to work across the aisle to bring these two sides together? Because this country has some serious challenges ahead. Of course, the coronavirus and, as a result, the state of the economy. I think he does. He clearly does. He has the ability to reach across the aisle. The, the challenge is, is how well is he going to be accepted? Um, and that is going mm. to be hard work. Because if you look at how divided we are and how many votes were for both candidates, this is not an easy task. But if anyone's up to it, I believe he will be. One thing I did write about previously in one of my op-ed pieces, though, was encouraging uh, both he and the vice president-elect to get out and to get to parts of the country where traditionally they wouldn't be expected. Again, I think they should be visiting uh, middle America and going out to parts where they didn't get great support to show they care. I think it's going to be important for them to be out on the road with so many things going on to be outside of Washington talking to people and engaging people in a discussion to show it just wasn't, you know, a speech to the nation. It was their talk. He's going to talk to people that may not have voted for him and show he really does have those feelings, which I know he does. Yeah. Um, Vice President-elect Kamala Harris doesn't have the same amount of uh, political experience as, as Mr. Biden, though pretty formidable in her, in her list of accomplishments. How do you see her working with Republicans for the next four years? Well, I, again, I would encourage her to get out on the road. Again, she's got a great career, yeah. a great track record. She's very impressive. Uh, to, not to overstate things, she's from California. She's from the coast. And a big part of Donald Trump's support was from the middle of the country. And so they don't know mm. her. It's not a negative. They just don't know who she is, really. And in many cases, some people may not have taken the time to learn about her because of where they're coming from. So I would encourage her to find events, particularly in things like um, workforce development, on bringing back her economy, things that involve their livelihood, their jobs. Uh, she should be out speaking on these matters, and it would be great to have her involved in Washington on those initiatives to, to show she has ownership of something that can improve the lives of all Americans, just as President-elect Biden said. You know, we didn't hear much 
from members of the Republican Party over the last four years in, in terms of being critics of the president. Uh, we started to hear louder and louder voices leading into this election. And, and you know, your, yours is one of them. But even over the last few days, even as the president, um, you know, called this election fraudulent, even as he declared himself the winner when you call when you only counted, according to him, the legal ballots, we're not hearing a lot from members of the Republican Party pushing back. Why is that? Well, I think part of it is, is Donald Trump's a bully, as you mentioned already. Um, and I think people are hedging on the side of being safe, which in this case, we needed people to speak up. And I'm proud to be part of that group. Um, and I don't want to criticize the people that haven't spoken up because I know a lot of people don't care for him. It's tough if you're in elected office and you have a jurisdiction where he might retaliate. Uh, you saw him cancel programs in various states and to do things that be a problem. Um, so people are being pretty careful about that. The main thing is, is we're moving in the right direction and we have president like Biden now. So let's get this behind us in terms of this era of bullying and in terms of people being attacked. Uh, those aren't constructive things. We need to heal our country and it's great to hear what Joe Biden's talking about. Mm -hmm. So this, you know, election has obviously been very interesting in a number of different ways. Um, there is a possibility that Republicans will be able to hang on to the Senate, where everyone's kind of watching and waiting until January. Uh, they gain seats in the House. And, you know, half of the country did vote for President Trump. And I've heard some critics say that part of the reason we don't hear a lot from members of the Republican Party is that he's still considered a bit of a kingmaker. Even after President Trump is gone from office, you know, what's the impact of him on the Republican Party? And has he changed the Republican Party permanently, do you think? I don't think he's changed it permanently, but if you look at the party going into this election, it was the party of Trump, um, where many mm. of us didn't feel very welcome because of how he behaved. Um, I'm a proud Republican still, and I hope there's a core of us, I know there's a core of us, and many other people that want to see the Republican Party become a party of um, civility again, about understanding that we do need to heal our country, that we do need to come together. And that's one of the things I hope uh, President-elect Biden looks at. Uh, obviously, he has to take on the coronavirus is the first thing in terms of the pandemic. Um, when you get into the economic recovery, that's part of that also. There are a lot of common ground issues that clearly are not partisan issues. And so I hope there's an opportunity for Republicans that may have been quieter, the Republicans that have been speaking up to sort of take a lead in saying, let's solve these problems together. Let's show how we can work together uh, across the aisle to make the country better in the best interest of the country.